Hey, this is Lincoln Barber, and I'm a commercial photographer here to show you how to use the FAA drone zone uh, to file for a permit in an area that is um, a no fly zone. So, the first thing is you want to go to this website, uh, FAA drone zone dot faa dot gov uh, if you haven't created an account go ahead and do that um, once you do that you can register your drone um, and get the serial number for it uh, you can also go to your dashboard here um, this is for commercial photographers so if you're a recreational flyer this is not for you so anyway you go to the dashboard and it tells you um, which uh, drones you have in the inventory um, and so you can add more devices um, I just sold my drone recently, so that's why it says one canceled device. Um, here's the waivers and authors, airspace authorizations. Now, this is what you do when you can't get an automatic authorization. Um, you know, certain airports, certain airspaces are controlled by the FAA more strictly than others. Um, so this is the, the best place to go to get uh, the, those kind of um, uh, waivers. Um, so I will first go into one I've done recently. I'll go to the, my manage, um, and you can see this is the one that we got, um, for, um, this hotel in, in California. Um, just want to show you what the overall, what it looks like once you get it completed, and then I'll show you how to actually fill this out. Um, so once it's, once it's completed and approved, um, you have all the sort of parameters, you know, responsible party, uh, operation parameters, latitude and longitude, location, um, and the, the proposed maximum flight. So all these are important things to remember, um, when you're filling out your, your, um, authorization request. Uh, one thing I have noticed is that the FAA likes it to keep it small and tight. So um, your radius should nearly never be more than, uh, you know, a fifth or a quarter of a nautical mile, uh, especially if you're in the class, you know, airspace, like class B airspace. Um, so once you get it all done, um, then they send you this PDF, which you can um, then upload to, um, in my, my case, I use DJI's drones and I have a SkyPixel account. And so if I have the drone in um, a zone where I'm, I'm using the, the authorization, I actually have to upload this PDF to my SkyPixel account. And then somebody at DJI has to approve and unlock the drone for flight in that area. So it's really important that you get this done before you do your, your shoot. And, um, and then you get it onto the DJI site and get it processed uh, at least the day before you actually do the, the flight. Okay, so that's kind of what the end result is. Now I'll go over how to actually um, fill one out. So you go back to your uh, waivers and authorizations. Um, you start from the dashboard. Um, you can see you can see right here. There's a button that says Create Part 107 Waiver. Um, so you have two options: operational waiver and then an airspace authorization. So operational waiver is like if you're flying you know, beyond line of sight or um, you're operating in places where you're not supposed to be legally operating a drone, like uh, large crowds or, you know, those kind of things. Um, you want that kind of one. But in this case, we're talking about airspace authorization. So it's when you need to fly close to airports. Um, we're going to start one of those. So um, it's just a simple form to fill out. It doesn't take too long. Uh, we'll just call this test operation. Um, this is already brought in from my, um, my, uh, my account that I created with the, with the FAA. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. So once you get to the second page, you go to operational parameters. So your start date, I recommend doing, uh, at least a month in advance, uh, if you can, uh, that way you have the FAA has plenty of time to review. Uh, so you'll click August. Uh, 20, let's say 22nd, 2022, the end date, also the same date. It's a lot easier to get authorization for one day than it is for a multi-day thing. So, um, if you need to do multiple dates, uh, you can certainly add it in here. Um, but there will be a little bit of back and forth with the FAA. And I've found that it's actually, sometimes the form doesn't let you proceed, um, without, by selecting multiple dates. So I just do one date at a time. Time frame. Um, this is, you know, the 
the least amount of time you can do the operation, the better. Um, so uh, if you need to shoot all day, then yeah, of course, you know, check them all. But if you just need to do one, you're more likely to get it. So let's say 4 p.m. to sunset. Um, a good scout uh, of the of the project you're going to shoot is really the best way to kind of figure this out. Frequency, um, we're just going to do a daily because it's not going to be anything other than that. Time zone, we'll say Pacific Standard. And let's just call this a hotel. We'll kind of do like the last one. Um, uh, you know, aerial photographs of a hotel. Try to be clear and concise. Don't need to make this too long. Um, the shorter, the better. Um, proposed maximum flight. So, you know, the state law or the U.S. law is that drones can't fly over 400 feet. Uh, and if you're close to an airport, they really want to keep you as low as possible. So let's just put in um, 150 feet. Usually get a good shot of a building at 150 feet. You don't need to go much higher than that. Okay, latitude and longitude. This is where a lot of people get kind of hung up uh, on what to put here. Um, so what I've done is I've found um, a website. And I just usually just Google um, longitude, find longitude and latitude. And there's this website called find longitude and latitude. And you can just type in your address here. So um, I'm going to do the uh, Carte Hotel, which is a a place in San Diego, it's really close to the airport. So we're just going to uh, put that address in here and click find. And then it outputs the uh, coordinates. So here's the map coordinates. There's the north. So you just put in these numbers for the latitude. So 32 back here 42 minutes and then 54.6408 seconds sorry 54.640 seconds and the direction is north okay and then now I get the longitude uh, and that is 117, 9 minutes, and 45.08. And you can see it says west. So we'll go 45.0, oh, 100. Zero, zero. I guess they do, they round down to the only the threes, um, and then you select west. Um, radius. So this is where you want. This is all nautical miles. So a tenth of the nautical mile is actually fairly big for shooting just like a building, um, and especially if you're close to airport, I would recommend you know keeping this as small as possible. So then you put in the uh, airport code, and when you put in an airport code that it knows, it's going to tell you to try to use the LAANC, um, which is the automatic authorization. And I have found that um, most cases you'll get denied um, using the LAANC uh, link, I guess it's called, um, protocol because it, it's, you know, you're right next to an airport. So I was just going to say no. So this is in those cases when you um, want to get uh, direct authorization from the FAA. So just hit OK. Um, so for the airspace, if you don't know it, just uh, Google, you know, uh, San Diego Airport airspace. And you can usually see the somebody, Google has these little quick cheat sheets, so it's Class B airspace. So select class B. Um, and then description of your pros, proposed operation. So this is when you talk about what you're you know, shooting, what kind of crew, um, you know, the sort of general details and get a little more information to the FAA. You know, a real person's gonna read this, so try to write it in a way that makes sense and is logical. Um, we're taking 
Beautiful. <laughs> Photos and videos of a hotel. Small crew and small drone. You know, I'm sort of being kind of short with this, but you know, whatever you can do to describe what you're actually doing, um, that's great. Just be honest. <laughs> Uh, and are there existing waivers, um, in which case there are not. So then you click next. And then you just review uh, the authorization here. Um, just make sure everything kind of looks right. And then you click submit. So once you hit submit, um, it can take up to a week or two to actually get uh, some sort of response from the FAA. Um, if there's any sort of problems with what you um you know, filled out, they'll let you know. Um, sometimes this can be a little vague. Uh, and sometimes they'll just deny it flat out. You know, maybe there's uh, some kind of like military operation happening that day. Um, you know, you just never know. So, but this is your, your best chance um, when you need to fly a drone near an airport. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, hit me up. Visit my website, www.lincolnbarber.com, uh, and send me an email or uh, catch up with me on Instagram at Lincoln Barber, B A R B O U R. Thanks. Thanks.